Hey, it's Kylie of Kylie M Interiors, blogger, paint color expert, and e-design consultant. Today we're taking a look at Sherwin-Williams Accessible Beige and the paint colors that go awesome with it. Now, if you want to know about Accessible Beige, I do have a review on that on my YouTube channel as well as on my blog, because this video is more about what looks good with it. This is for trim, cabinets, front doors, feature walls, and adjoining rooms. So if you want to make a palette with accessible beige, I've got the colors for you and a few that don't work. So I can show you what does and doesn't work. We're going to start with white. So Sherwin-Williams Alabaster is really as warm of a white that accessible beige can handle. If you have creamy trim, that's creamier than this. So you have antique white, creamy, it's a pretty tough sell. Dover white, top cell with accessible beige. This is about as warm as you want to go. You can also go more clean and crisp with high reflective white. If you're curious, this here is the whitest white on the market. It's bare ultra pure white. So you can see high reflective white is a wink softer, but it really is quite white. And I love my favorite white for accessible beige would be pure white. You can see it's just a bit softer. They really sit nicely together. Now, if you're doing cabinets, you want to make sure which white actually suits your backsplash and your countertop and worry less about accessible beige, but these should get you started. Now, you will want a pen and paper handy for sure because we have a big whack of colors here. Also, I have color reviews on all of these or probably 95% of them on my blog and on my YouTube channel. So if it intrigues you, you can check her out. Now, these are for when you want to do a room to room palette or a multi room palette. So these aren't for feature walls. We'll be getting into that next. This is when you have a bedroom and bathroom. You want to do the bedroom accessible beige. You want something pretty for the bathroom or you have an entryway and you want to do the living room a cool color. That's what this is for. We're going to start with aesthetic white. That's A E S aesthetic. This is gorgeous. When I'm doing a multi room palette, I really I usually like to get something lighter and warmer in there, especially with something like this. Really pretty. It's an off-white beige, a little bit of gray in it. It's really picking up what accessible beige is throwing down. Agreeable gray. Agreeable gray and repose gray. I've got both of these actually. Well, it's always hit and miss for me. I, I do like them together in a palette. I'm just always thrown because I don't like them together necessarily just sitting here. But if you were to do Maybe you have a south facing room, you want agreeable gray or repose gray to balance that warm light a bit. And then you want to put accessible beige in the partnering north facing room. Those can be really pretty palettes that you get a really a lower contrast flow from room to room and there's nothing wrong with that. Alpaca. It's all right. If you have to, if this suits products in your room, like your kitchen and this is in your living room, you can get away with those, but a little bit too taupey for accessible beige. I would stay away from the heavy taupish colors. So that would apply to this as well. Requisite gray. It's not bad. Again, not bad. They're both earth tones and they both have a nice organic feeling, but I find this is just a little taupey for our accessible beige. Just a wink, but doable. If I'm going to choose, I'd rather get you into the other end. So taupes can often have a bit of a purple pink undertone, whereas grayish has a bit of green and that's amazing gray here. Really pretty grayish, a little bit of green in there. Quite complimentary to accessible beige. If you want to get a bit of color, you want to be careful because accessible beige is an earth tone. It doesn't, or a neutral earth tone. It doesn't really want to be partnered with colors that are too colorful, too bright. Sherwin-Williams Sea Salt is a very popular one and I get asked about it all the time. That is borderline. You can, you know, I wouldn't do it. Let's put it that way. If you were desperate to do sea salt, because a lot of you are, you can pull it off, but I've got something better. Let's look at rain washed. Definitely better. A little bit more depth there. I like that. But if I'm going to choose a color, I'm going to be I'm going to err on the side of a little bit less colorful, a little bit lower chroma versus higher. I'm going to look at something like Silver Strand. So let's, here, let's compare Sea Salt and Silver Strand. So, dun, 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 dun. 
So can you see how accessible beige does favor silver strand here on the right versus sea salt? Just a little bit more muted, a little bit more gray in there. Again, this isn't bad, but this is awesome. What have I got now? You also wanna be careful with gray. So being a warm paint color, it is very fussy about its gray partners. It does not want a gray that's more or less equal depth and lighter than it and cooler than it. It also doesn't want a fresh gray, so something really crisp and clean. It needs a nice stormy gray, a warm gray, and one that's a little bit darker than it, ideally. Knitting needles is borderline. It's got the depth we want. It's a little bit cool for accessible beige. Tinsmith, definitely getting better. A little bit of blue in there. Mm, yeah, let's go to this one. Silver plate. So of those three, I'm gonna go to silver plate. It's got a really stormy undertone to it. It's darker than accessible beige, which makes accessible beige happy. It's really passive blue green undertone. If we compare that to big chill, which is like my favorite gray, you'll see big chill is a light gray with a soft blue undertone. It is so borderline with accessible beige because it's really a, a bit too light for it. You could do them side by side, but silver plate with that bit more depth is going to look a bit better as long as your room suits it. If you have a super dark room, Big Chill is gonna be better. Mindful Gray will be lovely. That's a nice light, medium, warm gray. You can see a little bit of green in there. Really pretty. Dorian Gray. This sits right underneath Mindful Gray in the fan deck. Love that. Let's get that guy out of our eyeball. There we go. Dorian Gray, really pretty. If you want a feature wall with accessible beige, that can be really nice. A new gray, that shifts us a little bit more grayy. That is awesome. It's a little bit, I mean, this is grayer, but it's a little bit of a tone on tone approach. So you're not really adding much color difference. Make a grayish, mm, yeah, that's all right. Does the job. I think I like a new gray better. You know, a little bit grayer. Make a grayish a little warmer, but you can do both. I also wanna show you a beige that does not work. A lot of people wanna do beige palettes with accessible beige. Accessible beige also doesn't want a, doesn't want a warm color that's much richer than it or more beige than it. So hot mess, right? So that's softer tan. When you're looking at a beige like accessible beige, you really need other warm neutrals that have a similar muted toned down base to it. So something like softer tan or kill em beige would just be super duper fugly. No can do. Um, Stone Lion, really nice. That's a beige, a little bit more depth to it. I betcha we've got better though, yeah. Let's compare these two. So we've got Stone Lion and Balanced Beige. You can see Balanced Beige is just a little bit more toned down, a little bit softer, really pretty. For tone on tone, it's hard to go wrong with that. Natural Tan, interesting. A little bit lighter, slightly off with the undertones, but if you were doing a room by room and you needed a one room lighter than the other, I think you could pull off Natural Tan. Tony Tote. So Tony Tote totally works. Where's our balanced beige again? Uh, there it is. So if we get Tony Tote. Balanced beige, these all sit in the fan deck together. You can see that. These get a little bit more warmth compared to accessible beige. Do I have anything else here? Not in that range. You wanna make a palette. If you can humor me for a sec, I'm doing this off the top of my head. Let's grab. Do, 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 do. Natural tan. Oh, let's grab aesthetic white. Amazing gray. Um, silver strand. Yeah. That's sea salt. Silver strand. Okay. Thank you for waiting. Let's say. Ooh, ooh, wait one sec. Okay, so let's say you've got aesthetic white in your 
entryway, hallways. It's always nice if entryways and hallways can be lighter than the rooms attached to them. Let's say you have aesthetic white. Get some nice high reflect white trim. Maybe you've got a secondary room in amazing gray, which is right here. And then we throw in silver strand for a little bit of color and interest. Really, really pretty. Well, that shows you an interesting palette option. I wonder if I've got anything else cool. Probably too much of a mess now. Let's look at islands. We're gonna look at islands, feature walls, cabinets, all that good stuff. So important detail. When you are doing a feature wall, you're probably gonna wanna do it in a matte finish because if it's a, well, if it's a darker color, because dark colors can look a little bit garish when they're in a glossy finish and you'll see more flaws in the wall. So I don't know if you can see this. Well, let's grab a darker one anyways, for sake of example. Cityscape. So if it gets a bit of a sheen to it, I don't even know if you can see that there, to be honest. It just gets a bit garish looking. We want it more of a velvety soft look. So when it comes to dark colors, I always do matte finish. If I'm doing cabinets, Front doors, always satin finish. I rarely go to semi-gloss and I never do anything lower than satin finish. You'll find that it's going to make dark colors look a little bit lighter than you'd expect when the light hits it. So some of these look pretty dark. So you wanna be patient because how they look on the large scale in a satin finish can be different and quite stunning. I've had experience with all these colors. So trust the ginger on this one. Let's start with warm stone. So that's the warmer end of things. Maybe you wanna do an island, a feature wall, super pretty. Once in a while there's a wink of green in there, but nothing to really worry about. Dovetail should be stunning. Dovetail is a color people like to do on their entire kitchen cabinets. You can see how amazing that is with accessible beige. If you're looking for a palette that's got a little bit more timeless quality versus gray on gray, accessible beige, dovetail, really pretty, especially if you threw the pure white in there. Really, really pretty. Love it. Okay, moving along. Gauntlet Grey. This is actually the darker version. Gauntlet, or Dovetail. You can see Dovetail there. Gauntlet Grey. This is an awesome island color, or if you have your living room, this could be a great front door. It's pretty high contrast for a feature wall, so that would be more about personal preference if you want high contrast or a lower contrast. Let's look at Pave Stone. Pave Stone is a grayish with a green undertone, so it should be lovely. Yeah, I love that. A little bit of green in there really interacts with the more organic, natural base and accessible base. That's Pave Stone. Again, I've got reviews on all these bad boys. So just write them down and check them out. Classic French gray. Nice. That's a more, it's not a cold gray, not a warm gray. Pretty charcoal-y looking, a little bit of green in there. Really nice. Cityscape gives us more green. Let's compare right here. A little bit cooler, a little bit more green. Nice combo. Nice combo for a feature wall. Keystone gray. Now this is grayish, medium toned. Really nice. It's, it, it sits above warm stone, which we looked at at the start. Really nice with that. Attitude gray. Attitude Gray has a little good shot of green in there. Um, got some gray, really nice if you want a little bit more color, but not like legit green walls. If we go darker, this is so pretty. So nice for an island, Grizzle Gray. Now, I always like to show black. So a color like this can look really dark. You don't really see the color of it on its own, right? So when you're looking at dark colors, make sure you get your brand's blackest black for sake of comparison. I've got that here. So whereas Grizzle Gray looked really dark, a little flat, you can really see the color and the proper depth of it come up. So you need that frame of reference. Let's also hit my favorite Urbane Bronze. I have this on our kitchen island stair railings. If you go to my blog, you can find photos of it in our home, like our projects. Um, also on my Instagram, you'll see it come up quite often. Urbane Bronze again, so that's a nice warm grayish green. Oh, there it pops, right? So pretty. So much love for that. What else do we have? Right, so 
successful beige, like a lot of other neutrals, like agreeable gray, modern gray. Um, they're really fussy about colors that have too much chroma, too much color, too much intensity. So you want to be careful that your colors do have a little bit of gray in there to calm them down. So if we look at in the navy, you can see how overwhelming it is. It's just bossy. It's taking over. Whereas if we add some gray, like cyberspace, it's like everything takes a breath, right? So we went from a little punchy, softer. Again, let's get our black in there so you can see. That's so pretty. I love this stuff. So we did it. Those are some colors. Now there are many more out there. I'm just touching on what I've got here. There's others out there that should get you started. Uh, please visit me on my Instagram feed and thank you for subscribing to my YouTube channel.